Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Maple Mountain. I have a new game in the Undo series, Undo 600 Seconds by Pegasus Spiel, where you go back in time to investigate ways to save a life or more. Undo 600 Seconds places you in Los Angeles on New Year's Eve. Right now, the main character of this scenario should have been lying on a sun lounger in Hawaii for a week already, cocktail in hand. Instead, he's clutching a pair of pliers with trembling hands uncertain which wire to cut. Sweat runs down his eyes. Adrenaline rushes through his veins. The seconds on the timer of the bomb tick down mercilessly. Eight. Seven. He desperately tries to remember his training with the CIA more than three decades ago. Six. Five. This must be payback for working only an office job these last ten years. Four. Three. He needs to make a decision if he wants to save all the people on this skyscraper. Two, he cuts one wire. One, as the fireworks begin to illuminate the skyline of Los Angeles. Zero, the sound of a massive explosion and a devastating ball of fire usher in the new year with a catastrophe. The game is set up like you see here. Don't worry about a rule book for the game because as you flip over the cards, it will tell you what's going on and how to set up the game so that it looks like this. And it also explains how to play the game. After you read the introduction cards, there are maybe five front and back, you will be ready to play. The changes you will make will occur simultaneously after you have finished your travels. Therefore, your decisions do not have any direct influence on the cards. So there are 13 story cards that will set you in different locations at different times. And you will be visiting these locations and possibly changing something, maybe for the good, maybe not, depending on what you know is happening or maybe what you don't know. In these stories, when you read the cards, they don't give you specifics. It might give you some descriptions of people or things that will only help you if you connect that information with the other story cards. So you're trying to somehow connect these stories by choosing which one you want to travel to. And you don't really need to travel to them in any order. You can randomly go to where you want to go. Reading one story card may help you understand another later on. Also, pay attention to the locations and the time stated on the cards. There are 13 small clue cards below each story card, and these clue cards have additional information that relates to the story listed above. You won't be able to read all of these, but during the game you will have four magnifier cards to use, and each magnifier card lets you read one of these clue cards below a story card that you have visited already, and at times other actions might give you additional ways to look at these clues. Players will play as a team with the active player making the final decision if the team cannot decide on what to do. The team will read story cards to get more and more information and the team will construct theories on what has happened and how to prevent the death. Each round you will read a story card and you will discard one of the time cards. These time cards are pretty much a round keeper in the game and you will read a story card and then at the bottom you will decide how you want to change the event, many times not really knowing exactly what is going on. You will take the stack of cards placed above this card here, and you will find the fate card that matches the location you're at, matching the number, and then picking the letter of what your decision is after reading the card. For example, if you choose option C for story card 8, then you will find the fate card 8C, and you will turn it over and place it above the story card 8. Eventually, you will have fate cards on top of all the story cards that you have visited. If you feel like you want additional clues, again, you can use a magnifier card to read the clue card on that location or another location that you've already visited. The goal of the game is to give the deceased more time to defuse the bomb, and you will gain time if you change the story for the better. If you make things worse, however, you will lose time. If you revealed a zero, you haven't made any change to the course of the events, the event that sealed the deceased fate happen, or the event has no influence on the time available. The next player will then take their turn with the team, always discussing what might be going on. Once the time cards are used up, then you will take the solution cards and read the card end of story. 
if you didn't end up changing the fate, then instead of reading the end of story, you can put the game back in the box to play another time as you still really don't know what's going on. Once you've figured out the story and understand everything going on, then you most likely will be done with the game, just like an escape room type game. The game is not easy to figure out, the text doesn't give you big specifics, and you are wondering what in the world is happening the entire time. In fact, I played this game a handful of times trying to figure out the story before finally realizing what has happened and to save the guy's life. To get the best out of this game, you need to talk as a team, talking out what might be happening and trying to connect past stories with others. Try to match locations and times with each other. The clue cards can help, as well as the results of the fake cards as you play the game, confirming something you did was good or not good, and you need to change your theory. So grab your pliers and fellow fate weavers, probably your friends and family, to save some lives in Undo 600 Seconds by Pegasus Spiel. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.